So if we examine absolute entropy and try to relate it to molecular structure, what we're going to find out is that it is going to be linked to the masses of the molecules and the molecular structure. The bigger the molecule, the more the entropy value will go up. Here we have some uh, hydrocarbons. We have methane, ethane, propane, and butane. As you can see, as you go up, increasing the numbers of carbons and hydrogens, the value of S is going to go up as well. All of these units are in joules per mole Kelvin, but these will also depend on structure. For example, we have two possibilities here, and there, here's a nice photo type model, and here is a more strange model, it's more abstract, but what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've made them into three-dimensional models. Now, this one does look quite a lot like the one that you see here. This one, seeing as how it was a very abstract model there, this model, I'd have to twist it like this to be as close as possible to what, the way they show it on here. But the thing that is of interest here is that these have exactly the same constituents. They're made up out of eight carbons and 18 hydrogens, both of these models. If you look at this, you see that there are six carbons that have hydrogens attached to them and they each have three, so that's 18. If you look at this, you see two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and then the ends for 15 and 18. So it's the same exact constituents here. However, if you go and you look up the numbers for the standard molar ent entropy, you find out that the one for octane is significantly higher than the one for the tetramethylbutane. Well, why is that? Well, let's start thinking about how much motion these can actually do. And we find out there's just not that awfully much that this can do. It, even if I change something, it still looks basically the same. It's not, it does not have a whole lot of possibilities for its positioning. On the other hand, this octane, I can twist like that, but then I, at the same time I can twist this one, then still twist this one, and then I can twist all three of them, and then twist this and twist that. And I can do that all the way through, and I have a lot more confirmations that I can create with this one than I could with the tetramethylbutane. So this explains why the entropy is higher for the octane, even though they have the same constituent elements. Another thing that is interesting is to consider a couple of the different possibilities. How does carbon exist in the world? One way it exists is as diamonds, and another way is as graphite. Diamonds have this structure, it's a three-dimensional structure where each carbon is attached to four other carbons in a lattice. Graphite, yes, there's a lattice, but the layers are actually separated from each other. It's sort of a two-dimensional surface and then another two-dimensional surface layered on top of that. You know, I think of it as a cake, you know, many, many layers of cake here. And it turns out that if you look at the standard molar entropy for these, you would find out for diamond is 2.4 joules, and for the graphite is 5.7 joules per mole Kelvin. This has a higher one, higher entropy. That means this diamond would like to change into graphite, but it's a very small difference between them you would have to go to significant effort to break these bonds in order to allow it to be capable of making these new ones. So there's a big barrier to this changing spontaneously into that. What this is telling us is that this is the more stable configuration. This is what we would expect to find. And yes, 
you're going to find a lot more coal out there in the world than you're going to find diamonds.